Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will, I will be joined by Ryan Rampersad, who will be sharing his experiences with the Fire TV Stick. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO39. Ryan, tell me one thing honestly. Is that actually the name of this product, the Fire TV Stick? That is the name of the product. You can verify this fact by looking at the URL supplied here in the docs. Oh, yes, of course. And on the show notes at uh, thenexus.tv slash SO39. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is the name of the product, and, and we all know that I like to call things not really by their name, right. but by their shape. Yeah. So it's it's not the Chrome cast, it's the Chrome stick. Right. It's, it's not, not the, the Nexus player, it's the hockey puck. It's the hockey puck. <laughs> so this product is actually named its shape, which is correct. Okay. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What is... I mean, it's not a fire and it's not a TV, though, Ryan. Well, it's not an Amazon rainforest. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, what is this product? So, we all have heard, especially recently, of these Chromecast products. Right, yes. If you want to hear some reviews of uh, recent Chromecast... Well, not recent Chromecast uh, products, but our recent reviews of Chromecast product products, just look a few episodes before this one in the feed. Right. So, if you're familiar with those, these fire things Mm -hmm. are the amazon equivalent right so the fire tv stick is sort of the entry level equivalent for amazon's tv experience right yeah so it's kind of kind of like the what's the entry level chromecast it's the chromecast yes second gen then they have the the next tier up which is the chromecast ultra yep they have that in the amazon scheme of things too Mm -hmm. so let's talk about the one that i actually purchased and used And then I can tell you about the other ones that I didn't purchase and use, but are very similar and they're about the same. I would like to note that, remember how you were talking about, like, the Chromecast name doesn't make actually that much sense because it's not running Chrome, it's running Android, etc., etc., you know? The Fire Stick name also doesn't make that much sense because, like, Fire is their tablet line, but then, like, this isn't a tablet, you know, so... Well, I mean, at least it's not the uh, Amazon Fire TV Pro Stick 2nd Edition Plus Enterprise. With backlight. (laughs) So, so, you know, what is branding? I don't understand it. Whatever. Neither do we. Yeah. So uh, let's go over some of the uh, important things, like the price. So mm-hmm. it's usually $40 from the time I looked at it. That was the price. It's list price on Amazon is $40, uh-huh. but they run sales continuously to make it not $40. Mm-hmm. So right now, as of this recording, it's $30. Okay. And most often, you can find a sale at Target or Best Buy or some other local retailer that'll have it for around that. I'm really kind of impressed that, like, Amazon convinced other retailers to carry this thing because, you know, you'd think that, like, retailer, retailer wouldn't want to carry other retailers' products. I don't you know? know. I mean, it's I mean it's sort of like that, but, I mean, it's not like Target has any... Um, they don't have any direct competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Target's never going to even try to do what Amazon's doing with multimedia. So mm-hmm. it, at this point, I think it's fine. Sure. So you can buy it pretty much anywhere, and you can buy it from Amazon, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about what it looks like a little bit. So it's um, a black stick. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, it's cool. physically a stick. So one side plugs into an HDMI port. They um, supply a, a short little extension cable in case... Um, your HDMI ports on your TV are in an awkward spot. Right, it happens a lot. It would be cool if they supplied like kind of like an L-shaped adapter, so you mm. can plug it in and then have it kind of stick out, mm-hmm. but still be rigid. Yeah. Mm. So that's a, that's an interesting thing. And then it also gets uh, power from a micro USB port. Okay. Not Type C, of course. No, why, of course not. Why would why would we live in the future in the past? It's also supplying that cord and you know charger thing which i always appreciate when these products do oh okay yeah um, you know funny thing is that for a person that needs usb micro usb mm-hmm. it's cheaper to buy a fire stick than to buy the first party <laughs> oem charger and it's actually a good quality one it has to power the thing all the time oh that's funny so that's a nice thing physically it's very small it doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't look out of place it just goes behind the tv and just sits there and yeah you'll never see it you'll never see it yep it's nice i like it they named it the Fire Stick because it's actually the form of a stick. It's not a puck. It's not an oblong. It's a stick. It's mm-hmm. a, what do you call a rectangular prism? Parallelogram? Parallelopiped? No, yeah, sure. It's one of those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They actually named it right. Now, the next level up mm-hmm. 
is called the Fire TV. Okay. But it's not... So uh, it's the exact same name, just without the stick at the end. Exactly. Okay. And it's a square. Okay. <laughs> so, so how does the square attach to the TV? Uh, does you, it have like a ribbon cable type thing? Like it, it You just plug in your, uh, you know, HDMI and oh, okay. give it some power. Through okay. The same uh, micro USB port. Mm-hmm. So the Fire Stick is not the Fire TV. Okay. Yes. There's no. Different products. Uh huh. The Fire TV Stick has a slower processor. Uh huh. So they're using some ARM processor. It's not a big deal which one. Allegedly, the difference between the two is that the Fire TV, the real one, the the, the square, mm-hmm. can play games. Okay. I don't know why you would do that. Does it like come with a controller to play games, or are they assuming that you're going to use the provided remote? It doesn't. It comes with the remote only, so you can buy a controller. Okay. But I don't know who would do that, especially at this point. I don't even think they make a big deal about the fact that it can play games. Now. Right. It's just it's a dead market. Nobody cares. The real difference between the two, though, is that the bigger one, the more powerful one, can play 4K content. Yep. But again. Who cares right now? Because who has internet for that in America? So the the Fire TV stick is a whopping forty dollars, but the Fire TV is usually seventy dollars. So you know that thirty dollar difference can um, you know change your uh, experience maybe a little bit. So I I have, and that's basically double the price. It is. Yeah. I don't know if the menus are faster. It didn't never seem slow to me. So mm-hmm. maybe they're imperceptibly five frames per second faster. Mm-hmm. They also have some interesting bundle deals. For some reason, and I don't know why this would ever come up, but you can get um, a Fire TV Plus antenna, like I, like a bro- like a broadcast like television, o- like the over the air antenna. Huh. And I don't know. Maybe the Fire TV, the real square one, mm-hmm. has some additional capacities that I don't know about. Like it can plug into over the air TV somehow and do something for you. That'd be cool. Or maybe it's just the kind of thing where it's like you just get one for free. You're, you're gonna need a, a you know an antenna for your TV as well. So if you can get By both now. of them at once, yeah, yeah. Um, they also have other deals like you can get an Echo Dot and a Fire TV stick together mm-hmm. as a bundle. So they have some deals here on the Amazon website for you. So that's pretty cool. So the Fire TV stick, the user interface is generally in the app format. So. Mm-hmm can take your little remote which we'll talk about in depth later Mm -hmm. but right now we'll talk about the apps you take your little remote and you d-pad in the direction you want to go in and you select whatever thing you want you hit the middle button so what is the what is their like home screen layout like Uh, a big ad on top for some amazon original content (laughs) or if if um for some reason they don't have a good profile for you right now Mm -hmm. uh or they don't think anything they have is interesting it'll show you some of the recent things you've looked at okay so if you've recently watched mr robot sure it'll show that banner up there on top Mm -hmm. and then they're kind of like these mini carousels so like it's an app but it's like the app icon here and then some content to its right okay. of, you know, whatever's in that app. So if it's the Netflix app, you'll see some Netflix stuff. If it's the HBO app, you'll see some HBO mm-hmm. stuff. So basically you're scrolling through this vertical list yeah. in order to get to the app that you want. Yep. Okay. There is, of course, a search button and you can just skip all of that stuff. Okay. But we'll talk about that again also later. The The big deal about the Amazon products, though, is that it actually has Amazon content, mm-hmm. and for what it's worth, there's some original content that I don't know about, maybe, I guess? Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. You tell me, I guess. Let's see. Amazon original shows that I have watched. Mm, 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 mm. Wait a minute. Nope. I know that The Tick is an original show of theirs, the, the, and the tick? and I'm interested in that because I've heard very good things about it. The Tick. Um, Man in the High Castle, I think, is an original of theirs. Yeah, so the, the tick is like a comic book superhero. That's oh, no, like no. a it's a farce, right? It's sure. making fun of what are those called? Parody? Yeah. It's a parody. Yes. Uh-huh. Allegedly, so of course, if, like so, you imagine you know you're signed into Amazon at the top level, mm-hmm. you know, for all of your personalization and stuff, mm-hmm. and then you can sign into your HBO app, your your, your Netflix, and all your yeah. stuff. Allegedly, there's cross app searching capabilities. Okay. But when I signed into Netflix and I intentionally searched for something, it didn't really work very well. Okay. I mean, it worked, but no, it wasn't really any better. So when you're signing into each of these apps, is it like an on-screen keyboard that you have to use the D-pad and? Yeah, we'll Ooh, talk boy, about that. In that's a bit. tedious. And and so so it's hit or miss whether you can actually search for something across apps or not. Mm-hmm. It all depends on that other app's integration. Mm-hmm. And if they choose not to, like you just won't be able to. Right. To be honest, you know, it'd be faster than searching across apps. Googling, does HBO Go have content? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not that I would know. I don't watch TV. So let's talk about the user input interface. So mm-hmm. the screen is a bunch of like apps and stuff, and you have a little remote to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I love little remotes. I'm on the opposite side. I know. You are. I want to get rid of them. I love the Nexus Player's remote. It is the single best Google TV product they've ever made, and all of them should have a little remote as an option, Okay. not as an exclusive mm-hmm. I- interface method. So the little remote that comes with the Fire TV stick, I think is the same remote you get with the larger Fire TV. So uh, regardless of which one you get, you'll experience the same wonderful experience. How wonderful is it? Uh, let's let's talk about that. So at the very top, what's their, what's their assistant called? What's that? Alexa. Alexa. Mm-hmm. At the top, there's an Alexa button, mm-hmm. I guess, presumably. Probably. Um, I, so I don't know. You, so you press it, and then um, you can ask it to do stuff. Okay. And that's really the search button. So if you're on the home screen of your Fire TV stick, it'll just pop up the little search window, and you can yep. search for stuff. So you can either type or you can just continue to talk. Mm-hmm. But they have actually an interesting interface on the remote itself for the button. So if you're in a program, like mm-hmm. you're watching a TV show, you're watching a movie, it doesn't actually – you don't press it, and then you go into a mode. You actually hold it down and talk. Huh. Okay. Like, so when I use the Nexus Player's little voice person button. Mm-hmm. Which is definitely not the Google Assistant. It's, I don't, I don't it's know. It's literally just like a voice search, like voice, voice dictation, I think. Yeah, voice person. Mm-hmm. So when I use that, it goes into a mode. It overlays whatever's currently playing and mm-hmm. kind of goes into a mode where it just will listen until you're done. Yeah. But the, the Fire Remote will actually force you to hold it down. And on screen, it says, hold down the button <laughs> if you want it to actually do something. <laughs> When I, and, and so I think it's really weird. Like, I don't know what, what decision they made here. So maybe they were thinking it's easy to accidentally press that button and, and uh, you know, blow up your show. Because mm-hmm. maybe then it has to rebuff or do whatever things and, do. And whatever decision they made, they doubled down on that decision because they, like, they have that overlay there that says hold it down. Yeah. Which means that they definitely know that people are confused about whether they need, it's a toggle or a hold and press. Yeah. But after you kind of, um, you know, use it a few times, uh-huh. you really feel familiar with the hold and press mechanic of mm-hmm. it, which I really like. I think it's really nice. And, you know, it kind of feels like you're on a walkie-talkie almost. Like, sure. Like, blah, 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 blah. Let go. <laughs> yeah. You can search for stuff with it. And you can also use, like, some of the, Am- if you're watching Amazon content, you can use some of those Amazon X-ray features. Oh, yeah. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. I don't watch TV, so I wouldn't know. I love Amazon's X-ray features. They're great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do use that particular button for. And it's to avoid using any of the other buttons. Okay. <laughs> um, I use it for pausing playback. and rewi- For real. For and, real. And rewinding and fast forwarding. It is fantastic. So um, we'll, we'll talk more about the other buttons on this little remote. But it is so, it is so fast, so slick to just say, pause you hold down the thing you say pause and it will just pause that's nice you don't have to say hey google pause living room stop that my phone is trying to listen to you (laughs) you don't have to yell across the room and you don't have to say the name of the tv or Mm -hmm. anything you just hey pause and it's done it's great and then you can fast forward you can say rewind 45 seconds you can say fast forward 20 minutes you know you can do all those things it's great. It's a good so, way to get through a program. But like you're already holding the remote, so why not just move your finger down an inch and hit the pause button? We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you sound like that biology teacher that I had in ninth grade who kept answering my questions by saying, That's beyond the scope of this class. It's only beyond the scope of this very moment. Okay, we'll fine. Get there. So this remote has a lot of buttons. Mm-hmm. And I thought the number of buttons on the Nexus Player's remote was fine. Mm-hmm. Voice control button, T-pad plus enter, mm-hmm. back, and home. Like, that yep. feels like the number of buttons that I needed. So it turns out I have no idea what the number of buttons are. are um, so I hope the list I wrote three weeks ago is right still. Okay. So it has the voice control button up on top, mm-hmm. which you have to hold down to make it actually do something. Mm-hmm. It has the D-pad, D-pad plus enter. Mm-hmm. It has a back button. Okay. A home button. Mm-hmm. A menu button. Uh, what? Is that like a right click, like an overflow menu type button? Yeah. It... So you know, like on the old days, like Android had the menu button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like that. Which okay. is, it's actually really useful, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Okay. It has then rewind, play, pause, and forward. Okay. 
Oh boy. So so it's um below the D pad there's two rows of three buttons. Oh boy. Yeah. Um and so it's like one of those mice that's like, you know, got twelve buttons under your thumb because you play you know, RPGs yeah, or whatever and yeah. like I can't I wouldn't be able to deal it's, with all that. It maybe it's not that bad, but it's pretty close. So here's the deal. So I've used I've I've watched at least two full T V series with this thing. Uh huh. I still have to look at the remote to figure out which button I need to press. <laughs> I can understand. I know where the the you know pause, pause play is because it's in the middle and I get it. Mm-hmm. But if I need to think about like where's the menu button, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like where's the back button? Well, it's on the left somewhere, but I don't know which one. Right. But the menu button is actually really useful. So if you need to turn on subtitles or if you need to um, okay look something up, instead of having to like hit the down arrow, right, to bring up some weird menu state. You just hit the menu button because it's it you know it tells you like when you start using it like this is the menu button yeah get to stuff with it mm-hmm. um so I I think it's fine I like it it's not a big deal man I like that remote it's so nice so they're like they're it's less contextual because each one of those buttons does its thing universally yes but because of that you have a lot of buttons and and, and so that's like kind of, that's the trade off that and they're it's, making and it's kind of funny that we're complaining about six buttons well. <laughs> You know, you look at TV remotes, like real TV. Oh, like yeah. TV, and there's, you know, zero through nine and then a dozen other buttons who knows who d- that does something. And especially if you've got one of those like universal remotes that's supposed to More interact than. with all of the, you know, five different boxes that are yeah. in your TV stand. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's there's a lot of buttons, but you'll get used to it. It's fine. They're really usable. Use them. One of the one of the, the remotes that I have for my TV setup is a literal wireless keyboard. That's got a lot of buttons. It does. I <laughs> I have a keyboard here too. One the the buttons actually are really nice. The Nexus Player's buttons are really plasticky and mm-hmm. just not very good feeling. Sure. These buttons are sort of rubbery and you can feel them very cleanly in mm-hmm. in, in the device. And they're just really clicky and nice and good. Like somebody designed it and it's fine. Nice. It's not an Apple TV remote, which is a single piece of aluminium <laughs> hollowed out by Sir Ives, but it's 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 still good. Mm-hmm. And it'll it'll like it'll give you frostbite on your hand because yeah. it's so cold because it's made of aluminum. So unlike the Nexus Player's remote, it doesn't have a flaky connection. So the Nexus Player, hmm. for whatever reason, will lose its little Bluetooth connection all the time. The Fire TV Sticks connection is pretty solid, very very strong. Gets yeah, I, I assume that they're both using Bluetooth as they their are both you know Bluetooth yeah. based. And this is one of the you know one of those compelling things like you know you're sitting on your couch and you're under a blanket and you don't want to figure out like what is, what is the most minimal way I can expose my arms to the cold. <laughs> You just want to control your TV. Right. You don't want to look at your screen. Because we're in Minnesota here where it's, it's cold. It's very cold. Yeah. And we don't have heat, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it, you don't want to look at a screen, another screen, a screen that's this big instead of the huge screen that you have at the wall. Mm-hmm. You just want to use your remote and you know use your muscle memory and just control your TV however you need to do it. Remote's great. Cannot argue with it. So let's talk about that keyboard thing you mentioned earlier. So mm-hmm. because there are all these apps and most apps have this default login gate right you have to log in to make it useful there are a few apps that you don't have to but mostly you do mm-hmm. the remote still sucks for that you, you you can't get away from it yeah the remote is great at controlling a program running it's not great for entering content right and so this is this is where like the chromecast model definitely wins out is that you have already authenticated on your phone right. and so because of that like i you know I don't if if somebody comes over to my house and I don't have a Hulu, you know, subscription, right. but they do, they can just play that on the Chromecast because like they're already authenticated. Yeah. Yeah. So that's super cool. And and maybe maybe there's a a future with some distributed authorization systems or something where you'd sign into your Amazon account with another account. Like you give Netflix mm. to Amazon almost mm. and it just and it just hands off whenever it needs to or something. Mm. I don't know. But my solution for this scenario, that kind of initial setup experience, mm-hmm. is to download the Amazon Remote app for your phone. Okay. And then if you select into an input box, you get to use your phone's keyboard. Oh, nice. And it just okay. Bluetooth or Beams or Wi-Fi is yeah. somehow. I'm glad that they have that at least as a as a solution. They do, yeah. and it's and it's perfectly fast and fine. In fact, I lost the remote. <laughs> uh, I lost the remote for a little while. And uh, I had to use my phone for remote for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Don't lose your remote. Come to think of it, that was the solution on the Nexus Player as well, right? You there was a remote app is, that you could get is, for but the the Nexus Android Player's team. Android remote is far worse than Amazon's okay. Android remote. <laughs> uh, uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. So we can talk about a few more things about the product just in general. It's totally fast and fluid. You can use it. It's really great. It's not nearly as leggy as the uh, Nexus Player is. Okay. Maybe that's just because that Nexus Player is really old now, you know, relative. But I mean, like, I feel like this Fire TV has been around for a while, and I, it hasn't gotten a ref. Has it gotten a refresh or I anything? Have no, I don't know if anybody even knows. Like, it's, yeah, it, nobody even cares. <laughs> it it's perfectly fine. It's fast. It's smooth. It's great. There's a screensaver mode similar mm-hmm. to the Chromecast, okay. but the difference is when you're on idle, the Chromecast is kind of just in its show pictures mode. Sure. But when you're on idle on the Fire TV, because it has that remote interface, it's pretty much always showing you the you know, set of tiles and you know apps and stuff. Okay. But then if you don't use it for too long, I think it's at least a few minutes of inactivity. Mm-hmm. It'll start showing you the pictures. And then you just press any button on the remote to wake back up again. Mm-hmm. It also seems to go to sleep, like actual sleep. So huh. if you, and I don't know for sure, it's hard to test it because I don't have that kind of time. But if you don't use it for like five hours, it seems like it just goes into a deep, low power sleep. Mm-hmm. And I think they might do that so that it can trigger the TV's like auto off feature. Mm. But I don't know for sure. Right. Yeah. Great plan, though. Great feature. Um, I also will. How how customizable is that like screensaver mode? Um, I have no idea, and I don't know why anybody would ever customize anything. Oh, because just because I love having you know the pictures of of random stuff that like nobody else in my house has anything to do with. But I look at that and I'm like, I remember that. <laughs> I, I I don't believe in customizing things. I will praise though that it can show the time. That's good. I love That's... that. It's a wonderful feature. <laughs> Let's talk about. This thing versus the Chromecast. Mm-hmm. So the Chromecast costs thirty-five-ish dollars, but you can get it on sale all the time. Yep, they're for basically the $20. same. Twenty dollars. The Fire TV has YouTube, sort of. Sort of. But the Chromecast has real YouTube, mm-hmm. mostly. Um, Actually, I I think I would say that it's the Chromecast has real YouTube more. Oh, m- more for than, sure. Than like, you know, regular but, like, YouTube has YouTube. But like the desktop experience of YouTube is the true YouTube as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So like basically what you get by doing YouTube on the Chromecast is you get queuing, right? You can yeah, queue up which is funny. as many I wish different, I could you know. Queue on the but desktop. then you're giving up uh, being able to play back as, at variable speed. Yeah, Those are the main it's things never that I can think me of. once in my entire life. I love watching. So now that I've started listening to podcasts at like increased speed, I've started watching YouTube videos at increased speed as well. And I'm like, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> People sound normal now. Oh. <laughs> um, so for me, they fulfilled different home entertainment needs. Mm-hmm. So with Chromecast, I watch YouTube. Right. Because its experience is actually good. Mm-hmm. So on the Fire TV stick, it's basically crippled because it's a browser thing. Right. Like Can you even log into YouTube on the I don't Fire think stick? Could, okay. I don't think so you'll never be able to take advantage of like ad free YouTube I red and I don't everything. Think so. Yeah. Yeah. So don't watch, don't get this for YouTube. Mm-hmm. Get a Chromecast for YouTube. On the other hand, if for some reason you need to watch Amazon content, as I did, mm-hmm. you can get one of these and it won't break the bank any more than your horrendous monthly subscription to X content. <sighs> <sighs> yep. the I, I'd say the biggest barrier here to having all of these different streaming devices for different services is having enough HDMI ports for them all. You well, know? Funny story. I have both of my Chromecast and Fire TV Stick plugged into a hub. Because oh. the TV out here near the studio only has two uh-huh. uh, HDMI ports natively. Okay. So, yes. It's nice that HDMI can do that. It can do that. It's awful, but it can. <laughs> does the Fire TV <sighs> stick support CEC? It does. Oh, nice. But okay, my good. TV doesn't down here. Oh, darn. So, it doesn't matter much. So, so, what CEC allows you to do is, like, if the TV is off or it's on a different input, you... Do you just mash a button on the yeah, yeah. on the remote a bunch of times for yeah. the for, yeah and then it basically if it you commands wake it up the from TV sleep, it'll trigger it yep um, incidentally my CEC on the TV upstairs has stopped it no longer Whoa, does it weird I don't know why so should you get this if you want to watch some Amazon stuff and or you want to use a remote yes 
You should. Does this integrate with the Amazon Echo family of devices? I don't have one to test with. Right. But since they're selling them together, one I would, would one would I assume would so. Assume so. I don't remember in my setup experience if I gave it like a like place in my house name, mm. so like living room or basement or mm-hmm. family room or whatever. But presumably, if that's not in there already, it would be added at some point in the future. Like on a scale of one to ten, like Amazon's presentation is like an eight. Okay. Of, of the of you know the user interface, the polish with the remote, everything okay. seems really good. But the ecosystem integration seems more like a four or five. Mm-hmm. Like it seems further behind because with the Chromecast, I can ask Google like play MKBHD on living room, and sure. it will go and do that, mm-hmm. and it's great. Or I can say play. Or show me where Ian is, and it'll show me a random video that Ian posted, <laughs> and it's also sort of great. So, and that well, that that applies to pretty much everything that you try to do with the Google Home. It's like it's either going to be like spot on, or it's going to be like so far off that it's like, how did you think that that's what I was asking? Well, I mean, I just thought it would actually try to show me a map on the TV mm-hmm. and not just yeah. a random YouTube video that you posted. I just thought it'd be useful. <laughs> uh, so, I think it's a good product. But maybe don't buy it for the ecosystem. Buy okay. it just because it's good on its own. Right. And especially since, like, in terms of the ecosystem, right, how, like, are there, say, podcast players available on it, right? Like, can no it, like, idea. it, does it, it feels like it's very focused on the big name. For sure. Video providers, and they, you know, there aren't really, you know, because I don't know if Pocket, I don't, I doubt that Pocket Cast has you know anything available on the fire stick whereas they definitely are available you know and almost all apps that play some sort of media on mm-hmm. your phone right have chromecast support so so i mean my my takeaway here is yeah this definitely sounds like the the best easiest way to get like amazon content up on my onto my tv but for basically everything else the chromecast feels like an easier way so suppose you had like um, family members who didn't have maybe not the access maybe to Netflix or the access to Hulu. Mm-hmm. Like you had the account. It was yours. And, right. And you didn't want them to like know the passwords and stuff. Sure. So instead of giving them the passwords to, for, so that they can Chromecast it from their phones, mm-hmm. you could just log in once mm-hmm. on your Fire TV and it could just be there. Yeah. Or couldn't I log in once to Netflix on their phone and then they yeah, have Yeah, but now that... they're going to watch all sorts of crap all the time on their own phones and include your profiles forever. Right, that... Well, okay. Everybody knows that they can't touch my profile even if they have access to my account because that is sacred to me. Right? So, I, I don't know. I think it... I think it... There's a place for it, I think. I don't want to say it's better than the Chromecast. Mm-hmm. It's totally inferior. <laughs> but... It's the remote man. Like, if you could have a Google product, like the Chromecast, but mm-hmm. with a remote, I mean, it could be the same Chromecast. and But but still support it. So basically, Just, you want the Nexus player that's still supported. Yeah, can I have that? Okay. Well, it, it not, that thing is not supported. That thing is almost dead. No, yeah, it's pro- I mean, look into the NVIDIA Shield, man. Like, NVIDIA is still pushing that real hard. It from and the first not- party, the Google, from the Google's mouth. <laughs> Ian Buck says Nvidia is a first party company. And now he praises the what? The Fire TV stick. Sure. Yeah. All right. Man, I'm out of thoughts here. I think that covers it. I mean, it's the thing that shows you stuff on TVs. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing else. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. If you would like to view more information about what we talked about, the show notes are available at thenexus.tv slash SO39. This has been a production of The Nexus. If you would like to find us on uh, social media, we're on Twitter as The Nexus TV. If you want to give us feedback about this episode, maybe you want to, you know, disagree with uh, either one of us, or if you have an idea for like something that we can review in the future, our email Email address is the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, RyanRamperset.com. 
And I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck or links to other stuff that I make at ianrbuck.com. See you next time, everybody. Have a good one.